Welcome back to Home Stuff Review. Today I'm going to walk you through some ideas of how to use home automation. People that are just thinking about getting into home automation or have been into it for just a little while might be wondering how it can help them. People that are already into home automation might be looking for some new ideas. Today I'm going to bring you about 20 home automation ideas. I hope that both beginners and experienced home automators can find something that's interesting. Some of these ideas may be pretty basic, some of them may be a little bit more advanced. A few of the more advanced ones, I'll give you links to some articles in the description. Now if you have any questions on any of the ideas that I'm giving, please leave a comment below. I'll answer all questions. Also, if you have some ideas of your own, leave them in the comments. The first one is a pretty basic idea. That is to turn the lights off when they're not in use. Um, the first scenario might be when someone normally, the time of day that they normally leave for work or school, um, turn off all the lights in the house. Um, another idea is there's some lights that are on for, or intended to be on for just a, a few minutes. Um, some of those lights may be going into the closet, a pantry, um, a bathroom, some place where the lights aren't intended to be on all the time. Those you can set a, a timer for. So you could say, you know, after five minutes, after a half an hour, whatever time you think is reasonable, shut those lights off. Another idea is to give you some idea that the garage door has been left open. I know long ago, before I put in some of this automation, I had a few, uh, a few instances where I left the garage door open, didn't know it, and it was open all night. I discovered the next day and, and you know, I, it was kind of shocking. I, you know, I'm hoping that nothing is missing from my garage. So uh, that was something that I attacked with home automation. So the first thing you have to do, obviously, is have sensors on your garage door. But the idea is to uh, write a routine that would say, if the garage door is left open, give me a reminder. Um, in my house, I do that through an announcement that goes throughout all of the Google Homes in my house. Um, so whenever I talk about announcements, you know, picture those coming out in every room where I have my Google Homes. Um, so I also don't want to have this happen, you know, during the, during the day, you know, when I might normally have the garage door open. So I say if it's after a certain amount of time or if it's after a certain time of day, then I want to send a message it's going to play in my house. If it's after an even later point in the day, then I'm going to send a text message to my phone to get my attention. So another one, I have a, like most people that have an attached garage, I have a door that goes from my house into the garage. And I want to be smart about it and turn on lights automatically. The problem is, although I do have a sensor on the door, I don't know which direction you're going. So I put in a routine that says, if the garage door had just been open within the last five minutes, then I'm assuming that you are just arrived home and you're coming into the house. So when that door opens, I'm going to turn on what for me is my laundry room light and a kitchen light uh, just to give you some light when you're coming in the house. Now, if that's not true, then I assume that you're going from the house into the garage and I'll turn the garage light on. Now, especially on the garage light, uh, that is normally, you know, we keep our garage can or our garbage cans in the garage. Uh, so um, what I'll do is, is after a certain amount of time, I'll turn that light off because I'm assuming that I'm just going out there for something quick and I don't want to leave them on. Another lighting type uh, idea here is I have a motion sensor in my master bath. So one of the things that always bugged me is I would go into the bathroom, uh, you know, for a late night trip and the light, I would turn the light on, it would go on full blast and it would be kind of shocking to my eyes. Um, so I have now with the motion sensor, if I go in there during normal waking hours, the light will come on full brightness. Um, if I come in during hours when I'm normally sleeping, it'll just come on 10%, just enough to be a nightlight so I can get my business done and without being shocked. Another idea is um, I might have the lights off um, in the front of my house. I do have those uh, set to come on and off at certain times of day. But if it's after that time of day and someone's approaching my uh, door, I want lights to come on. So I have 
uh, cameras uh, around my house and if a camera senses that someone is coming to the front of the house it's going to turn a light on. Also if someone is entering the keypad it's going to turn a light on. Now in a scenario where someone unlocked the door especially from the outside and with the locks that I have I can tell if it was locked you know with the lever from the inside or the keypad from the outside. If it's done from the outside then someone's coming in I'm going to turn on the foyer light um, so this was especially useful when my son was working a late shift. He would come in after I had the lights off. It would turn the lights on for him. And then it would also, uh, after he entered his code and entered, it would have the lights on inside for him to see his way around. Here's one of the more advanced ideas. Um, this is something that I do have a specific article for on the website, so check out the links. But uh, one of the things that I would often forget about is we have hard water, so we have a, a water softener. And, um, you know, for those of you that don't know, you know, water softener, you have a, a, uh, a receptacle where you have to fill it, keep it filled with uh, salt pellets. And I would always forget to do that. Um, uh, so what I did was I created some home automation to remind me when it's getting low. And in order to do that, I didn't know how much salt was in there. So what I did was I had an IR sensor that was pointed from the lid of the receptacle, pointed down at the salt, and could measure the level. And that's what w allowed me to send out a message if my salt was getting below a certain level and remind me to fill it up. Another thing, especially at my last house, was uh, we did have a couple instances where our sump pump uh, either failed or ran out of power and some water started to come into our basement. Um, so I wanted to have some type of alarm or warning for that. So I built something that would tell me uh, the level of the water within the sump basin and uh, give me a warning if uh, it was rising beyond the level where the sump pump should have kicked on. So not only could I, I see the, kind of the level of the water in the basin, but I, if I could tell if it was above where the pump should have kicked in and maybe give me an early warning that something was wrong with the pump. And then I even had a, a leak sensor on the outside so I would know that, hey, yeah, it's, it's gone beyond the top. And so something's really gone wrong. Now when some of these things that have really gone wrong happen, um, I would send a text message. To me, a text message was, you know, the upper threshold kind of a notification. A notification that was said during, you know, throughout the house is kind of a lower level uh, notification. If I send a text message, that gets my attention more and also helps because that kind of notification I can get even if I'm outside of my house and I can react to it. So anything with, you know, the sump pump, you know, going badly would be a text message. So I have two dogs. You've probably seen them on my channel before, Hank and Reggie. Um, when I let them out at night, whenever I uh, open the lever for the lock on the back door, it's going, uh, it's going to start a timer for five minutes. And when that five minutes is up, I'm going to get a notification throughout the house reminding me to let them back in. Um, you know, sometimes you get a little bit busy and the dogs are just out there forever. And, you know, depending on, they, dogs can get in trouble if they're left out there too long, right? You know, they, they might be digging a hole, they come in muddy, you know, so I just kind of want to be reminded to keep an eye out. Um, another thing on the back door is I also have a door open sensor. I have these on all of the exterior doors in my house and a few of the interior ones as well. But when the back door is open and it's at nighttime, it'll automatically turn on my back lights for me too. Can I turn on my own lights? Of course. It's just kind of cool and fun. So another thing I have, I mentioned leak sensors for the sump area. I have leak sensors throughout my house and all the areas that I anticipate, you know, could uh, have a leak. So I have one by my sinks. I have one by my toilets. Um, I have one by my water heater and I even have one by my humidifier because sometimes I've had it where the hose uh, isn't in the uh, piping correctly and that'll start leaking all over the place. Um, so I have these leak sensors. Um, so they'll give me a warning. Um, that again would be a pretty important one so that comes out to me as a text message. Now, another thing you can do with a leak sensor is to say, not only, you know, give me a warning, give me a text message, but there are home automated uh, water valves too, and you can put them on your water, uh, at the very 
uh, at, the, at the main connection so that if it senses a leak, it'll turn off the water main. Now that could save you thousands of dollars if you have something like that set up. Now I already mentioned this one, but another very basic idea is to turn the lights uh, on and off on the outside of your house. So I can time that a little bit better than you could even with a kind of a normal time-based timer because I can say, you know, turn them on a half an hour after sunset. You know, you don't usually want to turn them on right at sunset because there's still twilight, there's still plenty of light outside. So you can do it some period of time after the sun sets and off at whatever time you like. I usually do mine like midnight or something like that. Now, another thing I have is I have an interface to my smoke detectors. Um, so I get a warning uh, to my home automation system if the smoke detectors have gone off. Um, so I can get a text message. I can turn off the furnace. I can turn on some lights if it's happening at nighttime. Um, turning off the furnace helps you not to recirculate the smoke that may be in one area of the house. Turning on the lights is obviously, you know, it might help you see your way out to get out of the house if you need to. Um, one thing, and uh, I'll probably be doing another video on this, but I just recently got a irrigation system put in my house. Uh, not the kind, you know, on the ceiling on the inside of your house, but an outside one for my lawn. Now I might put something in, in the code there that would turn on the sprinkler in the case of a fire too. Maybe this helps, uh, you know, to prevent the spread of a fire. Um, I'm not sure about that. If I want that going off, you know, it, you know, if it's a false alarm, uh, I have to think about that one some more. Now, another thing I have is a warning, or I shouldn't say a warning, a notification when uh, the clothes are done drying. Um, I don't have a uh, smart dryer, but what I did do is hook up a uh, power sensing uh, module to my dryer so I can sense what kind of power it's using. And I can tell the difference between when it's running and not running. So I can send a message to say, hey, it's done. Now, another thing you can do is turn on your holiday lighting. Uh, so for instance, Christmas lighting, you know, both indoors and outdoors. Um, you can set that up on a timer. I know for mine, I just mentioned that I have normally my outside, my normal outside lights go on. Um, but if it's between, if it's Christmas time, and I usually set that between uh, Thanksgiving and New Year's, if it's between that time, I don't turn on my normal outside lights, but instead I'll turn on the Christmas outlets that I have outside and the modules and or outlets that I have for the Christmas lights, trees, etc. inside the house. But if the garage door is open um, or I sense motion, someone coming to the front door, that'll override this and it will turn on the outside lights so that you can see what's going on. That's kind of smart things that you can do with, you know, a lot of, you know, conditional logic that you can put in with a full automation system. Now, another one that I'm going to throw in here is going through my Google Home. Uh, so they have the concept of routines and routines are very, uh, very, very basic right now. But what I can do is uh, have, have it turn on a device that notifies my home automation system that I've just activated that particular routine. So my home automation system will know that and it can pick up and do smarter things. Um, but uh, I do some fairly basic things right now. Uh, you know, I'll turn off the lights in the house, I'll lock the doors, and then I do some Google Home specific things. Like I will um, have it tell me what my next meeting is in the morning. Uh, I'll have it ask me if I need to set an alarm. I'll have it tell me what the weather is going to be uh, in the morning. Um, and then I also, I like to play uh, some uh, white noise kind of stuff. So I have it play the sound of rain when I'm going to sleep for an hour. So I have it do all that on one routine. And also because I'm not going through the Google Home but to turn off the lights, but rather going through my home automation system, my lighting has the capability to do scenes so if I go through Google Home, you'll see it, it'll turn off. If I have it turn off five lights, you'll see it turn off one light, the next light, the next light, the next light. Um, but through my home automation system, I can turn off lights and scenes. So I can have them go all off at once instead of this, you know, a lot of communication going back and forth and the lights going off at different times. Now I mentioned that I have some timers uh, for the light in the bathroom. That's something that you don't want to leave on all the time. Uh, but in addition to that, I also have the fans inside the bathroom automated so that 
Um, if you, if the light is on, presumably someone is in there. It's an assumption, but um, if so, if someone's in there and it's, and the light has not gone off for three minutes, then it's going to turn the fan on. It assumes that a fan might be necessary. Um, and then it will have the automation that I mentioned before to say, after so long, turn the lights off. If the fan's on, turn that off as well after a certain amount of time. And I mentioned that I have security cameras. So I mentioned specifically that, you know, when someone's approaching uh, the front door, that I turn it on the front door. That's more like a friendly thing. That's I turn on the front light for 15 minutes. Um, like I said, my son often used to come home after hours because he worked second shift. And uh, so that was kind of a friendly thing. But also, if any of the cameras will spot any kind of motion after hours, um, that will also turn on lights. And that's more of a, a kind of a bad guy deterrent. Um, you know, shed the light on them and hopefully that won't be so attractive. So there's tons of ideas, but I'm going to give you one last one. And there's also lots of different um, systems that you can integrate to. Um, uh, just one example would be both my dogs, I have GPS tracking devices on them and it does activity monitoring and so forth. But uh, through IFTTT, I can integrate those as well too. It'll give me a little, some notifications. So if uh, that tracker needs charging, it'll tell me it needs charging. I can put it on the charger. When it's done, it'll tell me that the charging's done and it'll be, I can send out an, uh, an announcement that reminds me to put, put it back on to my dogs. Um, even it will tell me like if they hit their activity goal, it'll say, you know, hey, congratulations, Reggie, you've hit your goal today. You know, it's kind of fun. So that's all the ideas for today. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty more. I wanted to give you a little bit of a mix. There were some kind of basic ones, some more advanced ones. Home automation for me is something that I really enjoy. Um, it's a, you know, it's more about the convenience and the fun for me um, of thinking, you know, what kinds of things you can do. Hopefully you get some good ideas here and, and it becomes a, you know, a fun hobby for you as well. So that's all for now and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps us out. If you want to know when new videos come out, be sure to click the button with the bell icon for notifications. Take care and we'll see you in the next episode.